enactment. Political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth. And in order to secure public favor, legislators will yield to the popular demand, the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Los dignatarios de la iglesia y el Estado se unirán para sobornar, persuadir o obligar a todas las clases a honrar el domingo. La falta de autoridad divina será suplida por medio de decretos opresivos. La corrupción política está destruyendo el amor y la justicia y el respeto por la verdad. Y con el fin de asegurar el favor público, los legisladores cederán a la demanda popular de una ley que hará destruir la observancia del domingo. Please remember, they want to secure public favor. They want to do what's popular. And we already know that the Christian nationals and, and the foundation are promoting Project 2025. I'm assuming you've heard of 20, Project 2025. About the coming Sunday law. So, in order to be popular, they're going to promote that and they're, they're going to bring in the first stage of the Sunday law. Okay, let me move on and give you our next story. <laughs> you, do you know what a seance is? ¿Saben lo que es? That's, it, that, that's Spanish. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a meeting where you raise the dead and <laughs> you speak to people on the other side. Okay, here's a story. No, this isn't, this isn't a story. That's why there's no date. This is an actual app you can download. Here you go. Connect with past loved ones via seance. And you've probably seen it in your shoulder lots of times. They sit around the table and they see me chanting and they, they're trying to invoke the spirits of, of, of loved ones. Spanish. Huh? Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Science AI is an AI powered tool that provides individuals with the opportunity to connect with their departed loved ones through a meaningful and personal conversation. I'm not making this up. This is this is what's on their website. Powered by GPT-4 and developed by AE Studio, Science AI offers a unique approach to Spiritual communication. Okay, so you, if you wonder what sort of people would use this, this is what they are recommending. Individuals seeking to connect with their departed loved ones in a personal and meaningful way. Those looking for solace, closure or guidance through interactions with the spirits 
of their loved ones. Users with an open mind and a respectful understanding of personal beliefs and boundaries related to spiritual communication. People interested in exploring new and innovative pro approaches to seances and spiritual connections. ¿Qué tipo de personas, individuos que buscan conectarse con sus seres queridos fallecidos de una manera personal y significativa? Aquellos que buscan consuelo, cierre o orientación a través de las interacciones con los espíritus de sus seres queridos. Usuarios con una mente abierta y una comprensión respetuosa de las creencias personales y los límites relacionados con la comunicación visual. Y personas interesadas en explorar nuevos y innovadores enfoques a los medios y conexiones espirituales. The Bible tells us something very clear. La Biblia nos dice algo claramente. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the, the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light. In them. La palabra dice, y si os dijeran preguntar a los idones y a los adivinos que susurran hablando, responded, no consultará el pueblo a su Dios, apelará a los vivos, a los muertos, a la ley y al testimonio. Si no dijeren conforme a esto, es porque no está. Ok, now this we know well. Así que esto lo conocemos bien. And we stay away from witches and wizards and, and um, astrology charts. But now on your phone, just download an app and you can connect with the dead. These are the end times. There's something strange about AI. Back in 2023, this article in New America, they also question, is AI a portal for demonic spirits? Technology is occultism. This is one great truth that few today understand. But it must be understood if one is to completely comprehend the relationship between the technological and the spiritual, as well as the full possibilities for good and evil that modern technology presents to us. As knowledge becomes more known and used, it ceases to be considered a cult because it is no longer hidden. Accordingly, the occultism of yesterday is often the science of today. Astronomy sprung out of the occult practice of astrology. Chemistry came from alchemy. Psychology from the ancient ma mental magic. Oh, let me read it all. Okay. Likewise, the technology that is so commonplace today, computers, microchips, touchscreens, is also derived from the occult. Dice que la tecnología es ocultismo. Esta es una gran verdad que pocos comprenden hoy en día, pero hay que comprenderlo. Si uno quiere comprender completamente la relación entre la, lo tecnológico y lo físico, así como la plena posibilidad para bien y para mal que la tecnología moderna ofrece. A medida que el conocimiento se hace más conocido y utilizado, deja de ser considerado oculto porque ya no está oculto. En consecuencia, el ocultismo de ayer es a menudo la ciencia de hoy. La astronomía surgió de la práctica oculta de la astrología. La química surgió de la alquimía. La psicología surgió de la antigua magia oriental. Asimismo, la tecnología que es tan común hoy en día, ordenadores, microchips, pantallas, tablets, también se derivan. Now we know that spiritualism 
is going to have this uprise, increase in popularity in the last days. And there's a whole chapter about it in the book Great Controversy. But let me read you this other paragraph. I saw that the mysterious rapping was the power of Satan. Some of it was directly from him and some indirectly through his agents. But it all proceeded from Satan. It was his work that he accomplished in different ways, yet many in the churches and the world were so enveloped in gross darkness that they thought and held forth that it was a power of God. Vi que el misterioso golpeteo era el poder de Satanás. Parte de ella procedía directamente de él y otra indirectamente a través de sus agentes. Pero todo procedía de Satanás. Fue su trabajo el que realizó de diferentes maneras. Sin embargo, muchos en la iglesia y en el mundo estaban tan envueltos en una densa oscuridad que pensaban y sostenían que era de él. Please remember, in the Garden of Eden, Satan chose a medium through which to tempt Eve. Satan inhabited a serpent. How much easier is it for Satan to inhabit AI? Something that he has created in his image so that he can access. Now, these are just a small selection of stories this week. I did not talk about the eclipse. I did not talk about CERN. CERN. Had long collider. Okay. I did not talk about red heifers being sacrificed this week. There's a lot pointing to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let us pray. We thank you, Father God, for giving us signs that your coming is soon. We pray, dear Lord, that we heed these signs and that we get our lives ready. For these events should not come upon the people of God as an overwhelming surprise. Lord, help us to be ready and waiting for you. At this time, dear Lord, speak to us. May your Holy Spirit communicate your truths to our lives. May everything that is said bring glory and honor to your name. Because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of today's sermon is The Final Test. Mrs. White talks about us having a final test. For example, in Acts of the Apostles, she says this. Daily he, the Christian, must learn the meaning of self-surrender. He must study the word of God, learning its meaning and obeying its precepts. Thus he may reach the standard of Christian excellence. Day by day God works with him, perfecting the character that is to stand in the time of final test. And day by day, the believer is working out before men and angels a sublime experiment, 
showing what the gospel can do for hu fallen human beings. Diariamente, el cristiano debe aprender el significado de la entrega de sí mismo. Debe estudiar la palabra de Dios, aprendiendo su significado y obedeciendo sus preceptos. Así puede alcanzar la cosa de la excelencia cristiana. Día a día, Dios trabaja con él, perfeccionando el carácter que ha de permanecer firme en el tiempo de la prueba final. Y día tras día, el creyente está llevando a cabo ante los hombres y los ángeles un experimento sublime, mostrando lo que el Evangelio puede hacer por sus seres humanos. Ok. Let me give you another example. When men and women have formed characters which God can endorse, when their self-denial and self-sacrifice have been fully made, when they are ready for the final test, ready to be introduced into God's family, what service will stand highest in the estimation of him who gave himself a willing offering to save a guilty race? Cuando los hombres y las mujeres hayan formado caracteres que Dios pueda respaldar, cuando su negación y sacrificio hayan sido realizados plenamente, cuando estén listos para la prueba final, listos para ser introducidos en la familia de Dios, ¿qué servicio será más alto en la estimación de aquel que se dio a sí mismo como una ofrenda voluntaria para salvar a una raza culpable? Like a teacher examining the students at the end of the year. He, the teacher is going to give a final test. Whether you pass it or fail is permanent. The same with God. There is going to give us all one final test. If we pass, praise God. If we fail, Lord have mercy. The goal is this. The goal is perfection. God is not going to bring anything into heaven which is not perfect. Dios no va a traer nada al cielo que no sea he is not going to jeopardize the safety of the universe to allow one corrupt sinner into heaven. No va a poner a fuego el universo y la felicidad de todo por traer a una persona pecadora. We all have to be perfect. Paul says it this way in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Dice, para presentarse la gloriosa para sí, una iglesia que no tuviese mancha, ni arruga, ni cosa semejante, sino que fuese santa y sin mancha. Jesus says it this way. Jesús lo dice de esta manera. Be he therefore perfect. And if you're unsure what perfection means, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Y dice, sé pues vosotros perfectos. So one day, God is going to pick us up and look at our lives. And he wants to see that this life is completely perfect. Okay, so this perfection, please note, this perfection is not about works. Así que la no se trata de it's about character. Se trata. 
Do you have the character suited for heaven? Now, our character um, is demonstrated through our works. So we can see what type of character we have by how we behave. That's why Mrs. White says this. It is in a crisis that character is revealed. When the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go he out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were roused from their slumbers. It was seen who had made preparation for the, for the event. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepared for the emergency and the other was found without preparation. Dice, es una crisis cuando se revela el carácter, cuando la voz, perdón, es en una crisis cuando se revela el carácter, cuando la voz del viento proclamó a medianoche, he aquí el novio viene, salita a recibirle, y la viña del novio dura respetada sobre su recado, se vio quien se había preparado para la acontecimiento. Ambas partes fueron tomadas desprevenidas, pero una so the crisis revealed the character. So the crisis was the test, the final test of the character. So the quote goes on to say this. So now a sudden and unlooked for calamity, something that brings a soul face to face with death, will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul's needs to be supplied. Dice que así que ahora, una calamidad repentina e inesperada, algo que pone en el mañana, si hay alguna fe real en las promesas de Dios, mostrará si el alma es sostenida por la gracia. La gran prueba final llega al final de la aprobación humana, cuando será demasiado tarde para que la necesidad del alma sea So in the parable of the ten virgins, that final crisis was a call that said, Jesus Christ is coming. It's the same with us. That final call, the final call, will reveal what character we have. But we all will be tested. Think about Abraham and Isaac. Exactly. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 and 2 and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt test Abraham and said unto him Abraham and he said behold here I am and he said take now thy son thine only son Isaac whom thou lovest and give the and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon a mountain upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Oh, my bad. Y aconteció después de estas cosas que tentó Dios Abraham y dijo Abraham y él respondió heme aquí y dijo toma ahora tu hijo tu único hijo Isaac a quien amas y vete a la tierra de Moriah. Abraham was tempted with the thing that he loved the most. The thing that was dearest to his heart. Abraham would have died for his son. And God used that as his test. But when Abraham passed the test, God could say this. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know 
that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. So we're all going to have a test, a final test, and the and the key to it is preparation. Mrs. White says this, day by day God works with him, perfecting the character that is to stand in the time of final test. Abraham went through numerous tests in order to prepare him for the final test. He was asked to leave his home in Haran. And, it's, and when he gets to the promised land, there's a famine. And then he goes down to Egypt and he lies about his wife. And then he has to separate from Lot because he's so wealthy. And then there's another famine and he has to go and live with the Philistines. Then he has to rescue Lot, fight armies of thousands with 368 armed men. Then there's all this issue with Hagar. And then when Ishmael is grown, he has to exile him. Some of these tests Abraham passed. Some he failed. But in the end, he was ready for the final test. Mrs. White says this, To the soul who trusts in Jesus, temptation means victory and greater strength. Dice que para el alma que confía en Jesús, la tentación significa victoria y mayor fuerza. So every time you face a temptation, it's an opportunity for spiritual growth, for strength, for character development. Now, if we're finding it difficult now, how are we going to cope? finish okay let's go really quick this is a, you, a final test here you're gonna go you're gonna hang on okay <laughs> let's just go through the slide so jeremiah 12 verse 5 says this if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee then how canst thou contend with the horses and if the land of peace wherein thou tr trustest they weary thee then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the jordan si corriste con, con el lado de pies y te cansaron, ¿cómo contenderás con los caballos? Y si en la tierra de paz estabas quieto, ¿cómo harás en la hinchazón de los caballos? If, if you're finding these tests difficult, wait until the final test. Si encuentras que estás quieto, Israel as a nation was tested and eventually failed the final test when they rejected the Messiah. But we are all going into a time of the final test. Mrs. White says this, the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. God is, and she also says this, this is the test for every soul, to whether we serve God or not. Ella dice esto, esta es la prueba para cada alma, así sirvamos a Dios o no. Ok. So, what we need is to prepare for this final test. Así que lo que necesitamos nosotros es preparar.
So let me tell you what the final test is about, what's on the paper. Let me just slip you what's happening. The final test is going to be about the Sabbath. The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is a point of truth, especially controverted. And we know that the final test is going to occur from the passing of the first Sunday law bill, the all the way through to the close of probation. And then the whole world is going to be tested. Okay? And preparation for that final test is going to be key. But God is good to us. And he's preparing us for that final test. Compassionate Redeemer, who in the full knowledge of the doom that awaited him, tenderly soothed the way for the disciples, prepared them for the crowning trial, and he strengthened them for the final test. Dice que misericordioso, misericordioso Redentor, quien en pleno conocimiento de la condena que le esperaba su avanzó. Suavemente el camino para los discípulos los preparó para su nueva formatoria y los fortaleció para la salvación. So everything you're going through today is actually a blessing. Así que todo lo que nosotros estamos pasando hoy en día es una bendición. Mrs. White says this: These experiences that test faith are for our benefit. Ella dice que estas experiencias and from these testing, from these trials we go through today, we are going to get strength. So everybody now, is you're going through a testing, a proving time. In order to prepare you for the final test. So when you go through your test, I want you to change your perspective. Stop complaining about your tests. In fact, James says, count it all joy. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So whether it's with your spouse or your children or your work or your church or your friends or your finances or your health, whatever your issues, wherever you are being tried and tested, counted or joy. So when God has finally prepared you, he'll take you through that final test. And you can be assured that you will come out as gold. But Job says this, a man who's going through his trials, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And the prophet Zechariah says this, And I'll bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. 
y probaré los, cómo se prueba lo que invocará mi nombre y yo le diré el pueblo mío y él dirá Jehová es mi Dios es mi prayer mi desire that all of us come through our testing as gold. Let's stand and pray. We thank you, Father God, for every single trial. It's hard to say that at times, but we do thank you because we know there, Lord, that you desire our best. And you bring us through these trials in order to bring out a perfect character. We pray there, Lord, that you reveal yourself in us and through us. So that when you come, in the clouds of glory, all of us will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. This is our prayer and our desire. And we pray this in no other name than the precious and worthy name of Jesus Christ, that all the church say, Amen. Amen.